Well, I hope that's working now. Okay, so let's um, let's open up Spider. Okay, so that's where we left off yesterday. Um, and then let's flip back over and uh, let's uh, open up the notes for Turtle Graphics. I don't remember if it said this in the book or not, but the um, the reason they call this turtle graphics is this uh, this originated I don't know maybe as far back as the '60s I'm not sure, um, but there was a guy at MIT uh, that wanted to teach kids how to program, and um, he designed this little robot that kind of looked like a turtle I guess it, and. Um, it was about, you know, about this tall and kind of round and, um, you could give it commands and, you know, back in the sixties, I'm pretty sure there was probably a cable connected to it, but, um, you could give it commands and it had a pen and you could tell it to raise the pen or lower the pen. And when the pen was raised, nothing would happen. If the pen was down, it would touch the floor. And as a turtle walked across the floor, it would make a track. Uh, with the pen. And so the idea was you you learn to program by learning how to get this turtle to do stuff that you want. And basically getting the turtle to do stuff what you want, do stuff that you want, is just basically telling it to draw patterns. Okay. So you need variables, you need input. Uh, the output in here, we're not going to be doing any prints, but uh, the output uh, will be lines on the screen. Okay. Now before we get started, uh, you need to go, I'll leave this up here. You guys flip over to um, Spider, and near the right part of the menu, there is a Tools option. Click on Tools, and under that, there is an option called Preferences. And choose Preferences, and then there's one called IPython Console, and that opens up a dialog box, and there is a tab on the top of the dialog box labeled Graphics. And so click on the tab labeled graphics, and then I think it's kind of in the middle of the screen there. Um, it says back end. And we want back end to be automatic if it's not, or is, is it already automatic? Or is it something else? Oh, okay, you already changed it, okay. Yeah, so set that to automatic, and then you can go ahead and just close that uh, preferences window, and um, we should be good to go. And I'm trying to remember, I put this, up there last summer sometime and I think turtle graphics still works but I think this makes it easier if you want to do like one program and then do another one and then do another one and do another one so you're constantly opening up windows uh, that you can draw stuff on okay um, so um, create a new file a new Python program and uh, copy these two lines and um, hit the enter key a few times to open up some blank lines. And I will do the same thing here. Whoops. So this, this is stuff that goes at the bottom. So, you know, just open up some space and put it down at the bottom. Okay. Now, Turtle graphics are not built in to the language. One of the things uh, I think that makes Python popular is the fact that Python has literally thousands of add-ons that you can add on to the language and make it do more things. A lot of those have to do with data science, so manipulating large amounts of data. But 
Turtle graphics are not built in, but somebody wrote a module for Turtle graphics, and um, it comes when we downloaded Anaconda. You guys, most of you downloaded Anaconda on your own computer. When you downloaded it, uh, it downloaded a bunch of those packages as well, and one of the ones that it downloaded was Turtle graphics. So, anytime you want to use one of these packages, uh, sometimes they call them a library. Uh, you have to put this at the top of your program, okay? So uh, this goes right underneath those beginning comments. And so just type import turtle, or you can copy and paste that if you like. Yeah. Whoops. And then we want to create a new turtle. This one's a little tricky because the first turtle is lowercase and the second one is uppercase. Uh, so maybe it's just easier to copy that and paste it in. And then we want to create a screen and I'm going to call it win for window. And uh, we're going to paste that in right here. Now, I don't think I've ever actually run a program with nothing in it like this before, but I think we can. Let's go ahead and click on the green arrow up here. And maybe not. Maybe not. <coughs> okay. So, okay, let's try a few more things. So uh, what we've done so far is you can't do anything unless you put the import statement at the top. So that's just a given. We also are going to put these two at the end. And the first two commands are always going to be these two. So basically, you're always going to start off with these five instructions as a basis for our program. And then... Um, we can do turtle commands, okay? So if I want to set the color of the turtle, uh, it's t.color. So t.color. And then there are, uh, I can't remember. I think it's like 140 different colors that have names. And, you know, if you stick with the basic colors here, you will probably be okay. So... Um, let's do blue. And that takes that pen that's attached to the turtle's tail and it makes it blue. And notice what type of data that is. That's a string. You have to provide the color as a string. If I just try color blue and I don't put quotation marks around it, it tells me that I have an undefined name. So it has to be a string that's passed in. It has to be a string that matches one of the 140 built-in names. Um, we can also change the pen size of the turtle. So let's go down here and do T dot. And if you wait just a second after you hit the dot, uh, you don't have to remember all of these commands. They will show up for you here. And um, did I miss pen size? Let me type, let me start typing. Uh, Okay, so there's pen size. And this is the number of pixels, so we'll make it two pixels wide. Um, that's an int. If you're talking about a size, it's got to be a number. So that's going to be an int. Whereas up here, um, we're talking about a word, and that's going to be a text string. 
we can make the turtle move forwards and backwards. Let's copy these two commands right here. And let's paste them in down there. So we are going to create a screen. We're going to create a turtle called T. So I'm saying, okay, turtle, I want your color to be blue. And then we're saying, okay, turtle, I want your pen size to be two. And then turtle, I want you to go forward 100 pixels. And turtle, I want you to go backwards 100 pixels. Okay, now let's try to run this one. And it is not working. Well, maybe it's possible that my system here. Uh, are you getting anything? Got a blank screen anyway and a line on it? Cool. Um, I thought I had everything changed on this computer, but it's possible. Well, usually it shows up as another window down here, but I'll try that. Hang on a second. You're right. It is there. Uh, on my computer, on my home computer, I'll see a second little window down here. And that's why I thought it wasn't working. Um, well, mine did not move forwards and backwards and draw a line. So just keep your turtle screens up there so I can kind of look around and see who's got it and who doesn't. So you guys look like you're okay. Josie, didn't work? Got it? Okay, you got it. So is yours working? I saw yours is working. Um, Xander? Yeah, I want you to put the phone away until after class. Um, yours is not working. T dot forward one hundred, T dot backward one hundred, T dot color blue, T dot pen size two. I do not see anything wrong with that. And you're not getting any errors when you try to run it. Uh, try to run it again. Let's see what happens. Um, try a different color. Let's see what happens if you try a different color. Try, uh, yeah. Nothing. So we know, okay. We know it's creating the turtle because that little arrow is on the screen. And we know it's creating the window because we're getting a white window to come up. Um, try, let's just see what happens if we, if we don't do those two. Put a, put, a, um, put a pound sign in front of each line. Okay, and now try to run it and see what happens. Was yours all, okay, there it is. Nothing. I'm not sure what to tell you. Um, I don't see anything wrong with what you have. Um, let's try a few more things and we'll see. Uh, you, you can probably uncomment those now at the bottom now. Okay, so you're good. You're good. Are you good? You got a line on the screen? Okay, and you, everybody's good now? Leo, did you get it? Yeah. Okay, so everybody's got it except me and Josie. Okay, so I'm gonna close out of here. And I'm gonna flip back over to the notes. And, um, well, um, let's try this. Uh, the pin is supposed to be down by default at the beginning. Um, so, uh, at least Josie, um, pin down 
and we'll try that again. Oh, well, now mine works. Work for you, Josie? It works now? Okay. This is one of those things that annoys the crap out of me because either they should all be starting out with the pen up or they should all be starting out with the pen down. Um, not some of them starting out with the pen up and some of them starting out with the pen down. But okay, so we're not getting anything, but if we put a pen down, uh, we'll, we will get something to appear, okay? Um, so let's, let's close the window. You gotta, cl you gotta remember to close the window when you're done, otherwise your next, the next time you run it, it won't work because it thinks it's still running. And just pick another color. And if it's a color that you can think of the name of, it will probably be there. And let's go out to the internet for a second. Just open up a new window on the internet. And uh, let's do Python turtle color names. Python turtle color names. Okay. And uh, actually, let's go down to the third one here. Is your third one say docs.python.org? Okay. Um, that is the Python site. So that is the place where you know everything will be correct. So let's try that one first. And um, does it give us a list of, this is a long page. Um, so everything you'd wanna know about turtle graphics is on this page. And maybe the colors are not listed here. And apparently it is not. So let's back up then. And let's try the first hit then. Trinket. And if you click on it, um, it will give you the turtle name. Okay. Never heard of that one before. But let's try some that look a little more common. So we've got Dodger Blue. And you notice that it appears that there is a space in that. So when you enter the name, you're going to have to put a space in it. Um, the one I did a minute ago is probably this one. It's just lime. Yep, that's lime. And uh, so there's, I think the number is 140. So you could count all these up and see. Uh, but so you want a color, uh, make up a name. Uh, if it doesn't work, uh, let's see what happens if you make up a color name that isn't real. Uh, so just put, uh, I'm going to put limes there instead and I'm going to run it. And I didn't close my other program first, so now I need to try to run it again. And so if you don't specify a color, um, it looks like you just get white maybe. So it's probably drawing a line there, but if it doesn't know what to set the color to because you gave it a bad name, then that's what will happen. Okay, let's go back to the notes. You can make the turtle turn relative to its current angle. You can have it turn left, you can have it turn right, and you specify the number of degrees that you want it to turn. Okay, so let's, let's do that. So let's make this a good color again. Uh, if you still have your turtle graphics window open, um, well, okay, I don't know if that's open or not. Um, and let's have the turtle, instead of having to go backward 100, let's delete that line and let's have it turn left 90 degrees. And that won't do much for us. You'll see the arrow turn, so it's pointing up instead of pointing uh, to the right. Uh, but let's make it go forward again. 
and we'll do another 100. So we should get a square corner, basically a backwards L when we run this. Um, go ahead and run it. And you guys getting a square corner? But I'm not. Okay, this is nice. Okay, hang on a second here. Uh, Python console graphics. Yeah, mine did not get changed. Or I know I changed it earlier this year, but uh, maybe they redid the um, the disk image on my computer. Now I'm going to try it and see what happens. Um, Okay, so now let's run it. Josie, how's yours working? Okay. So mine's working now. If it hangs up on you, then what you may have to do is just uh, get out of Spider and get back in again. I haven't had many problems with this on my personal computer. Okay. So we can draw two lines at right angles. And now what I want you to do on your own is I want you to finish the square, okay? Make it a square. That was fast. Everybody else got their square done? What's that? Let's do an alt tab. Okay, why is it not running? Um, It says connecting to kernel. So if you see that message, it's not. Okay, now try it. If you see this up there, I think you should be good. So now let's give it a try. And that window doesn't always show up, but you see there's no, there's two of them there. Okay, so you got your square. I'm guessing you'll teach us how to reduce stuff. Yes. I remember doing that. We did something like that. Oh, an intro? Yeah, yeah, we did. Got it? You got square? Yeah. Got a square? Sander, you got a square. Got a square? Uh, I saw yours. Mine was up, so Josie, got a square? Or are you still fighting the computer? Got a square? Um, okay, Macintosh. I'm not sure. Uh, try closing this window. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There you go. Okay. You good? Okay, and did you go double check your preferences? Mm -hmm. And it, it says uh, automatic like mm -hmm. it's supposed to. Okay, we're gonna close this console over here and we'll try it again. Turtle has no attribute. Oh, you misspelled forward. Uh, right there, put the R in. Now let's uh, run it. Okay, okay, and then we close it, 
And so you're going forward, left, forward. How come your arrow's back down on the bottom? That doesn't make sense to me. I'm gonna try it again. Okay, now the arrow's not back on the bottom. So it's doing what you're telling it to. It's going forward, it's turning, it's going forward. Okay, so you just need a few more, yeah. Did you get it? Okay. Okay, I didn't do it, uh, so let's... Uh, Okay, so I go forward, left, forward, left, forward, left, forward, left. Technically the last left isn't really needed because it'll close off the square. Uh, but cutting and pasting is something that comes in kind of handy here. Uh, let me make sure I've got uh, any turtle window closed and I do. So I should be able to run it now. Okay. Okay, um, let's go to our window up here and let's type win dot. And from the list of options that pop up, there's one called BG color. And uh, I'm gonna make mine black. You can make your background anything you want to. I would make it something different from the foreground, otherwise you can have a hard time seeing your square. and run your program. Okay. Go ahead and close it. You gotta remember to close it when you get done. Okay. I want to do an equilateral triangle. How do you uh, how do you do an equilateral triangle? What's that angle? Somebody must have had geometry in high school. 60. So the angle that the turtle has to turn is 120 because the whole thing is straight line is 180. So uh, change your program so that instead of turning 90, uh, you turn 120 every time. When you get the triangle on your screen, just leave it there so I can see it. And that way I'll know that you did it. Okay, I see one triangle, I see two, three, four, Not quite a triangle. Forward turn, forward turn, forward turn. Each turn is going to be 120. So this is what you should have. I'm just going to delete the stuff here at the bottom. I'm going to change my left turn to 120 and I'm going to copy these two lines, paste them in two more times and then let's run it. Okay. You know, my triangle's kind of small and I think it should be bigger, okay? Um, 
So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make, we're going to make our life easier. I've read that programmers are really lazy and they're always looking for the easiest way to do stuff. Um, the easy way to do this is not to change the 100s to 200s all the way through. The easy, then I got to change three things. Uh, the easy way to do it is to create a variable called, let's call it length, and let's set it equal to 200. Order makes a difference. So before I do anything moving forward, I've got to declare a variable called length, set it equal to 200. And then down here, I'm going to change the 100s to the word length. But if you do a find and replace, if you go up here to edit, and um, okay, it must be under search on this one. Um, well, that's interesting. Um, do a control H. Oh, let me try that again. Select that stuff, do a control H. And uh, down at the bottom, a little window opens up. And I want to put 100 in there. And you know what? Well, we're going to do a find and replace the hard way, I guess. So let's put length in here, and I'll check on that. Search. Replace text. Okay. What's the shortcut for that? You know, in almost every other editor, it's Control H. Okay. So we'll do we'll do Control R. And um, Control R, and we get a search down at the bottom. We're going to search for 100. Replace with length and do uh, replace all. And um, now all three of them should say length. And now go ahead and run your program. And your triangle should be bigger than it was before. Unless you already had a triangle with 200. Control Z, I think. Does that work? You're not getting what? Uh, no, you don't. No, you don't. You can just do a Control R. And a little window down at the bottom. First thing, you're looking for 100 to replace with length, and then do replace all. There you go. Well, let's say I want a bigger triangle yet, but I don't want to have to go in and change my program every time. Uh, let's close this program so we can run another one. And let's take where it says length here, and let's replace this 200 uh, with an input command. And we'll just type in side length with a question mark. Now, so that lets the user input the length. This is not going to work. Why not? No, you can type something in. Say it again. We need to put INT at the beginning because what is the input always? What type? String. It's always a string. What do we need? We need a number. We need an integer. Okay. So convert that to an int. So we put um, int at the beginning and a left parenthesis. And then what's going inside the parenthesis is the whole input statement. So we need a closing parenthesis on the end. And now every time we run it, you can type in your own number. Okay, so go ahead and run it. 
And, you know, this kind of gets in the way. And it seems like it takes a few seconds before it even responds so you can move it. But it should be asking you for side length down here in our console window. And so I'm going to type in a bigger number yet. I'm going to type in 300. And unfortunately, it doesn't flip you back over there. You have to flip back over yourself. get it? It's doing what? Okay, try closing that. If it hangs up on you, if it hangs up on you, uh, over here at the top of your console window, there is a little X there. On Windows, it's a red and white X. On Macintosh, I'm not sure what it is, but you should be able to Click on that and it will just stop and it'll restart Python for you without having to go back to the beginning. Did you spell input correctly? Is it I N or I M? I am. Let me see. I gotta I can't read it without my glasses. Yes, it's I N. In. Yeah. It's not running. Um, it, boy, that's kind of weird. It doesn't like your file name. Let's, um, let's just stop this. And it should come back. Now let's try to run it again. Okay, there you go. Now do your slide length. You can have one little triangle. Okay, now if we flip over here, oh, but well, we got a fat pan, so. Okay. So I think everybody's got a triangle now. Let's, um, let's try a few more things. So close your window. And um, let's let the user input the pen color too. So let's do pen color equals, and if I want to get it from the keyboard, it's got to be an input command. So I'll make a nice prompt that says pen color question mark. And then uh, if I leave this here, I'm still going to get lime every time. And what I want to put in is I want to put in whatever is in the variable pen color. So those are the two lines that need to be changed. Go ahead and run it. When it asks for a pen color, just think up a color name and give it a try and see what you get. If you pick a valid color, then it should work. If you pick something that's not actually a color that it knows about, then I don't know if you'll get anything or not. Okay, so I'm going to run it. And it wants to know, come on. I don't know why there's this delay here. Um, seems like I get that delay every time. Do you guys get that delay? Yeah, okay. Um, not sure why that happens. Let's, I'm gonna change my pen color to red and hit enter. And I'm going to leave my side, I'm going to type 300 for my side length again. And I'm going to run my program. 
And there is my red triangle with lengths of uh, 300 for each side. Okay. Yeah, Nate? Do I need to come and look? Okay. You know, this is a class I really wish you could sit next to each other in. So if you mess something up, you can look at the other person's screen and figure out what's going wrong. But like it was fine. It popped up. Okay. Um, let's run it and see what happens. Key and error. No such file. Okay, try closing the console window again. You already had to do that once, didn't you? Yeah, I've done that like twice. Actually, six times it looks like. Okay. Okay. Well, you seem to have gotten the lucky computer. So if it continues to hang up on you, Keep closing that console window and starting over again. That's not supposed to happen, but uh, obviously it happens more often with turtle graphics because I don't think we've had that problem at all with the other stuff we've done in the last two days. Question? Bad color string blue, okay. Blue's a color, right? Sanders just got an error message. It says bad color string, and then it says blue. Okay, this is what I'm guessing happened. I'm guessing that you typed in blue with a space either either before or after the word blue. That probably is not smart enough to take the spaces off. Need again typing in blue. Make sure you don't put any spaces before or after it because that becomes part of the text that gets entered in. Now it works. So you must have done an extra space before. Okay. Let's customize it a little more. Let's allow the user to, let's close the window. And uh, so we've got a pen color. Uh, we're not allowing it to choose the pen size. Let's let the user choose the pen size, okay? And I think we can do a variable called pen size, but let's put an underscore in there just to make sure so it doesn't get confused with the other pen size right down below. And uh, we're gonna do equals, and I'm gonna ask them for the pen size. Pen size has to be a number though, right? So let's convert into an int. Make sure you put opening and closing parentheses there. One nice thing the editor does is when you are on a parenthesis, it highlights the matching one for you so you can see uh, where they get paired up, okay? So then instead of pen size two, if we don't change the line here that sets the pen size to two, we're not doing anything. So let's put the variable in there and now whatever the variable is will be used for the pen size. So we're gonna set the color of the pen, the size of the pen, and the length of a side all through user input. So let's go ahead and run it. And wait five or 10 seconds until it gets done with doing whatever it's doing. Oh, that's, okay, finally, uh, so let's do pen color. I'm gonna make a fat pen and side length, I'm gonna leave it at 300 again so it's nice and easy to see. And there is my fat pen with a line that's 10 pixels wide, yellow lines on a black background. Okay, let's close it. Okay, and now, I don't wanna do a triangle anymore. 
I want to do a hexagon, six sides, okay? How much do you have to turn for a hexagon? Anybody know? Anybody want to guess? Nope. How many degrees in a circle? 360, okay? So all the way around is 360. If I want to do a triangle with three sides, what was the angle? 120. If I want to do a square with four sides, 90. Anybody see a pattern so far? What's, what is it? Oh, pardon me? And how'd you get it? Subtracted. No. How do these two numbers relate to that? Aha. So if I want to do five sides, I said six though, didn't I? That'd be 72 if you divide five into 360. And if I want six sides, 60 degrees, okay? So six sides, we got six lines, we got six turns, and every time we turn, it's gonna be 60 degrees, okay? So you need, um, you need actually um, six more lines of code because we're drawing three more lines and we're turning three more times. Um, copying and pasting might be a good idea here. Okay, so pen color is light blue. The size, let's do five. Length, I like 300. Actually, no, it might be too big for a hexagon. Let's try 200 for a hexagon. And let's see what we get. Yeah, even that's a little too big, isn't it? So something a little less than 200. And you should be able to see the whole thing on the screen. Okay, got it working, 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 yes, not working. Um, just copy and paste it. You get the first three lines or is it hung up on you? Okay. So now you got a brand new window over here. Um, copy those six lines and, and paste them in one, one more time. You missed one of the, one of the forward ones. And I don't know where that came from. That shouldn't be there. Now give it a try. Oh, and that you can't have anything indented unless it's inside an if statement. Yeah. Okay, run it again. Don't put spaces in your in your color name. What's that? 
Okay, let me take a look. So, what line? Line 17, look at line 17. What's wrong with line 17? Um, invalid. Yes. Okay. So what happens? Okay, so which line? Line 16? Let's look at line 16, see what's wrong. Um, this is supposed to be down here. Oh, wait a second. So we get it here, and you can't use it until you get it. So this needs to be down on that line. And then we got to hit enter there. So now let's give it a try and see. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so you're asking for the pen color, and then you want to set the color. Well, you want to set the color to pen color, not side length, okay? Uh, then you get the size and you wanna set the pen size. So that needs to be after this. And instead of two, you gotta put the variable name in there, okay? And uh, then you should be okay. So you gotta put length in there and you can't have two, oh, what are we doing here? Pen, oh, that's, that's to be pen color, right? Okay, so put pen color on top of that and then put pen size down there where the two is and I think it will work. Okay, everybody's got a hexagon being drawn on the screen. Okay. Now, I want you to draw a figure with 60 sides. Just kidding, just kidding. That's a lot of cutting and pasting. Okay. Wouldn't it be nice if instead of having to draw instead of having to copy and paste all this stuff, uh, we could just say, do this six times, okay? Uh, and we can. There is a command in Python to repeat instructions, and it's called a for loop. Type the word for, and I almost always use the variable i here. We kind of borrow that from math classes. In range six. So you see where four is blue and in is blue? What's that tell you? The reserved words, right? You can't have a variable called for, you can't have a variable called in, because they mean special things. I is just an ordinary variable name, just has to start with a letter. And I'll bet 90% of the time I use I as the counter variable here in a for loop. And then range six means I want to do, I want to take every number up to six. Uh, but it doesn't do it the way we do it in English. It does it the way computers do it. If I said, I want the numbers up to six, you'd say one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Here's what the computer says, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Starts with zero, okay? So it goes up to, starts at zero, goes up to, but not including that. So the first time I execute the loop, and the loop is gonna be these two instructions in a minute. The first time I do it, I is zero. So I'll, do, I'll set I is zero, I'll do these two. And then I'll set I to one, and I'll do these two. And I'll set I to two, and I'll do these two. So I'm gonna do this pair of instructions six times as I goes from zero to five, okay? Now, I'm getting an error message, and the reason is because this is just like an if statement. I have to indicate which instructions need to be repeated. Otherwise, it's just gonna to try to repeat everything. So the way you tell it which instructions are gonna be repeated is the same way you tell it which instructions are controlled by an if statement. You indent it four spaces, okay? So, 
that's the standard in Python. All my life in every language except Python, I always indented three spaces because I thought that was enough. But in Python, uh, the convention is to indent four. Okay. Now, run that program. Get a hexagon? Did you get a hexagon? No? Were you getting a hexagon before? And you're not getting, you didn't indent the body of the loop. You're good. 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 No? Good. You know what? I don't think anybody sits here. So why don't you sit up there from now on, okay? Um, it's just hung up on you? Okay. Um, flip back over to our console window and just click on the X up there and kill it. Oh, okay, it is waiting. Oh, that's right, you don't have to log on, do you? You're, <laughs> you're good. Okay, and uh, so you got to indent them. You're not indent. So you got to go up here and hit tab, hit the tab key, and then go to the beginning of this line and hit the tab key. Now run it. Okay, can't, what's, how can there be an error up there? Uh, I in range can't assign to, oh, you got one. That's supposed to be I. Good. Yours working? Yeah, it is. Leo working? Yes? Everybody's good. Okay. Okay, let's try a little experiment here. Um, let's take these two commands, these two lines right here, and I think we can do shift tab on, yeah, do shift tab. And that will move them back to the edge. Now, this may not even run. You see that little red and white X over here? Um, but if I have a for loop like this, the body of the loop, would the, the thing that gets repeated, is supposed to be indented here. If I don't indent anything, nothing gets repeated. So I may as well not even have the loop. So when you do an if, there's, there's only, well, there's three places I think that we do this semester. On an if statement, you put a colon after the first line of the if. And what do you do on the next line? You indent. On a for loop, you put a colon at the end of the for line. What do you do on the next line? You indent. There's one other one that we're gonna do later on. Put a colon on the end of the line. What are you gonna do on the next line? You're gonna indent, okay? If you don't put the colon there, if you put the colon there, it'll remind you. If you forget to put the colon there, it does not. Um, I think it should be smart enough to know that, but apparently it's not. So nothing's really gonna happen here. Um, just watch what happens on my computer when I do this. Uh, and actually we will only get to see the result. Uh, so let's say that I tab that over. And um, so I put that in the loop and then I forget that this goes in the loop. So what happens? This gets done six times and then I go do this once. So I'm gonna run this now, you guys don't need to do it. I'm just gonna run it myself. Let me see if I closed out, I think I did. Yeah. So I'm gonna run it. And I gotta answer these questions over here. Does yours take this long? Does it? I swear it doesn't take this long on my other computer. I don't know what it is about the ones in the lab. I 
I'd say we're coming up on 20 seconds here. Think so? Oh, come on. I don't want to do that. Oh, there it is. There it is. It finally came up. Pen color. Um, we'll do red. Pen size, five. Side length. And I'm just going to do 10. Otherwise, I'll go way off the screen. And hit enter. And uh, now when I go look at it, okay, so it went 10 six times. And then you see, you can kind of see that the arrow got turned 60 degrees there, but it didn't go any place. So it's kind of pointing up and to the right. So you have to remember when you, when you want something repeated, everything that's supposed to be repeated needs to go in the loop. As soon as you move it back to the left edge, you can either backspace here or you can do a shift tab. As soon as you move back to the left edge, it's not under the control of the for loop anymore. It's just another instruction. Also, if you do something like that, we've only got two choices here. Either it is at the left margin, or if it's inside of a loop or an if, it's going to be indented four spaces. Now, that's just a convention. You don't have to do four spaces. Um, I think the tab key on here is set to do four spaces. So if you just hit tab, you'll be good. Um, but th that's just a convention. I could do two, but then I'd have to do both of them by two. Uh, if I indent one four, then I'm basically saying that that's the standard for this for loop. Everything else has to be indented the same amount. And since this is neither indented four to make it part of the for loop, and it's not all the way back to the left edge here, uh, I'm going to get an error message. If I try to run that, um, I don't remember the wording of the error message, but I am going to get an error message. And actually, I might not even have to run it. I might just be able to click on that X over there. And that's all I need to do. Unindent. So I went back. I unindented it by two. Does not match any outer indentation level. Okay. So there's nothing else that's indented, only two. Now, as soon as I back up two more, that will go away. If I hit the tab key, then I'm good as well. But it's good. those are the only two choices I've got, either left margin or in four. Uh, now, a couple of other little tricks here of using the editor. If you have some stuff that you want to all indent or unindent at the same time, uh, there's a neat little trick. You can't do this in Word, um, but if you select all the lines and hit tab, uh, those lines will all indent the same amount. If you do a shift tab with a bunch of lines, uh, they will all unindent the same amount. So if you got, you know, 20 lines, you want to indent them all. Uh, it, you don't have to do 20 commands. You just have to select them all and hit the tab key once. Okay. So we're, uh, we're making progress. Um, but this program is always going to run a hexagon for me. Okay, I don't want it to always run a hexagon for me. I want to be able to type in anything that I want and have it draw the appropriate polygon for me. Okay, so that means this needs to be a variable, the number of sides, and the angle needs to be a variable, and that's real easy to do. Uh, let's go back up and um, right after we get the length or the pen size. Uh, wait a second. Okay. Yeah, that's just normal variable. So now what I want to do is I want to know how many sides. So I'm going to ask the user. Size is going to be an integer. So after I input the string, it's after asking how many sides, Then I want to take that and I want to convert it into an int. And I think floats work here as well, but number of sides should probably be a whole number, an integer. So each time I go through the loop here, I'm going to do one side. So instead of six there, I want to put sides. So if I input a 10, It'll go from zero to nine, 10 times. 
Now, the other thing I need to find out is how big this angle is gonna be. And over on the board there, a few minutes ago, we just figured out what the size, what the rule is for an angle. Angle is gonna be 360 divided by the number of sides, okay? And this would be better if I spelled angle correctly. And um, it's always gonna turn 60 degrees unless I change the 60 to angle. Okay. So we had to change these two lines right here. And then we had to replace six with the variable sides and 60 with the variable angle. Okay. Go ahead and run that. Now, the bigger number you use for sides, the smaller the length of a side you're gonna to wanna to use, otherwise most of it will be off of the screen. Pardon me? You can pick any side you want. Yeah, yeah. What'd you pick? What's in, what number did you pick for size? Six? Okay. Might want to do something a little bit bigger than that to make it a little bit easier. Okay, we got a stop sign here. I'm hoping you chose eight for that. Working? So what are you on now? You're on 12? Gee. So you're rebooting like almost every, every time. You've got this on your own computer, okay? It seems, it seems like a turtle graphics thing as opposed to the other stuff that we were doing because nobody had this trouble day one or day two. Um, so see what works like on your computer, but yeah, it's not supposed to do that though. <laughs> got it? Invalid syntax. Uh, on which line? Let's say line 18. Okay, so line 18, uh, it just says invalid syntax equals 360 divided by sides. Okay, um, did we forget something on the previous line? We did, you forgot your closing parenthesis on the previous line. Okay, one thing about error messages in Python if you get an error message and it says error, error on line 20, it always tells you what line it's on. It might be on line 20, but it might be on line 19 as well, okay? So if you look at line 20 and everything looks good, try the line above. And I'll tell you the mistake I've seen most often so far is forgetting to put that second closing parenthesis on the end when you're trying to get input and convert it into an enter or float. You got one pair of parentheses for the input function and you need another pair for the int or the float function. So it has to have two opening parentheses and two closing parentheses. So you can draw any polygon you want now, right? Cool. Uh, let's take a break until 10 till.
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Okay, let's get started back up again. Um, click on the link here for examples, and that's a Word document. And uh, just open that up. <clears throat> no, up higher. It's the first first bullet item. It says examples. And let's take a look at um, some of these pictures here. Okay. So let's take a look at that first one. And let's look at that picture there and see if we can figure out what's going on. So zoom in on that picture of the spiral. And so that's where the turtle is starting out, right there. He's going forward a little bit. And then he's turning and it looks like it's 90 degrees, but I think it's a little less than 90 degrees, okay? Uh, and then he turns again, but what's happening to the line that he draws every time? 
getting a little bit longer. It's getting a little bit longer. Okay. So um, we've obviously got a loop here. And what's, what's happening every time is you got to figure out what's being repeated. What's being repeated is the turtle's moving forward. The turtle is turning. And then before, he goes, before we go through the loop again, we got to make the length a little bit longer. So there's only three instructions in the loop to get this to work. I don't remember how many times I did this, um, possibly 360, but I don't remember for sure. Uh, let's do this, okay? Let's go over to Spider, and um, let's, let's take, um, I wanna, I wanna keep this. So let's, do, let's just take everything in here and select it and copy it to the clipboard and then tell Python that we want a brand new file. And then paste it into a new file. Now, um, we don't need to compute an angle in here. Uh, let's just take um, take all this stuff where we get things from the user and delete it. Uh, take the instructions in the for loop and delete those. Okay, so now we just basically got, we've got a shell here that will make the screen black and it'll set the pen down. Okay. So uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to set a color for the turtle. So T dot color. And um, my background is black. Uh, make sure you set your background to the color that you want. Okay. Pardon me? Oh. Yeah. How's that? Okay. Hot pink is actually one of the colors. Okay, but I'm not drawing anything yet. Um, so I need to have like a, a length variable. It's gonna start off really short. Let's, let's just do like five pixels, okay? And then I'm gonna start drawing my spiral. And we'll do, let's not do 360, let's, let's just do 100, uh, I hate that. You know, you gotta do a space after that and then you can hit enter. And that's another really annoying thing about this editor, but uh, in general, I like the editor. So we're gonna set the length equal to five uh, and then we need a for loop. And our for loop's always gonna take on the same format for I in range 100. And you gotta put a colon on the end. Now you see where we got this red and white X over here? Um, the reason that's there, if you pause the mouse over, it's gonna tell you that there's supposed to be an indented block in a for loop and there isn't one there. And it doesn't find that out until it gets to this instruction down here. Cause you can't have blank lines obviously if you want to. So what do I wanna do? I said I wanted to move the turtle forward. So T dot forward and it's gonna be the length. This is something that's gonna change every time. So I gotta use a variable. And then I wanna turn left. And it looked like it was a little more than 90 degrees. Uh, so let's do T dot left 91 and see what happens. By the way, I no longer remember what, number to, what numbers I used to create that picture. So this might not look exactly like it, but it'll be similar. Now, if we run this, uh, let's actually run it and see what happens. And we're not asking for any input, so we should be able to, uh, great. Try it again. So we should be able to go over to that window here and you see what's happening? Because we're not increasing the length, uh, we're just going around uh, kind of in a circle. We're turning 89 degrees every time. 
or 91 degrees every time. Um, actually, didn't I say the other one was 89 degrees? It was less than 90? No, we'll, leave, we'll leave it here and see what happens. Uh, but now I got to add something under length. So let's just say length equals length plus one. And now we should get something a lot more interesting than what we just had a minute ago. So let's go ahead and make it go. So we're getting there. Taking a while, but we're getting there, okay? Um, the one over in the Word document, um, it looks like, yeah, it, well, I did turn a little more than 90, so like 91. Uh, and it looks like I'm adding more than one pixel on every time. Um, and there's also a way to speed up the turtle here as well. I think it's speed, yeah, speed. And speed can be a number up to 10. So 10 is the maximum, and the turtle will go as fast as it can go if we set the speed to 10. Seems like maybe it should be on that all the time, uh, but it's not. So let's, and then down here, we're gonna length equals length plus two. And we'll run it, and hopefully you don't have to wait as long this time uh, for it to finish. Oh, I forgot to close my window. If you don't close your window, you can't run it again, so. And that's clearly faster than before, isn't it? Now, how does that compare with our Word document over here? Um, so what do you think? Um, I think it's turning more. I think you're right. Um, so let's, uh, let's close the window here. And uh, instead of turning 91, let's try turning 92. And that may not be enough, but it'll look closer to the one in Word. Go ahead and run it. Is that still not enough? Let's try 90, try 93 or 94 or 95, just pick one, and uh, we'll see what we end up with. So, uh, I'm gonna try 95, and I think that might be a little too much. Yeah, it doesn't look that much like a spiral. Did anybody try 93 or 94? 93 looks good. Okay. And I am gonna change this to 360 now that it's going faster. I don't, it shouldn't take that much longer to do 360. Let's go ahead and run it. Let's look at them side by side. Do you think I'm adding more on every time than just two? I think I am. I'm gonna try three. And uh, run it. Yeah, 
Hey, what do you know? I think that one's pretty close. Make the line three pixels longer every time and um, turn, what are we turning? 93? Yeah, that's not quite as sharp a spiral, is it? But we know how to do it. You can just tweak the turn, and you can tweak uh, the amount that you add on every time. And uh, eventually, you'll get one that looks just like this. OK, so let's take a look at the Word document. and. Uh, well, here's an interesting one. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on there, um, but this is this is what's happening. And we're not going to try to draw this one today. Maybe uh, maybe tomorrow. Um, it's drawing a parallelogram, basically a diamond, and then it's moving over and it's drawing another one. Actually, they're all starting here, but they're rotating a little bit. So something something kind of like that. It just keeps rotating and drawing parallelograms, but there's so many of them that it's kind of hard to see, you know, how that was created in the first place. Um, let's scroll down a little bit further here. A snowflake. This one's a little more intricate, but we've got something that's being repeated six times here. You draw one branch of the snowflake. So how do you do this? Uh, you have the turtle go forward, back up, turn left, that looks like, um, what is that, 45 degrees, maybe? And go forward and back, turn right 90 degrees, and yeah, it looks like a square corner if you go from this one to this one, doesn't it? So 45 left, forward and back, uh, 90 right, forward and back, uh, 45 left, back straight up on that line, and uh, do some more branches for the snowflake. Okay. Uh, this is... It's an X. It's made up of a bunch of squares. So I got squares going from here all the way down to here. And I got squares going from here all the way up to here. Um, man, what is this one? This one is, I think, let's follow this line here at the top. If you go over and, okay, can't start there. So the sides are all the same length, I'm pretty sure. So if I go over, and then down, and down, down, over, and then you kind of get lost in here as to which one is the one you're following. Um, but I think it's this one, and this one, and this one. So it looks like I'm doing a bunch of stop signs. And then every time after I do a stop sign, uh, I turn a little bit, OK? Um, that's, I think that's kind of like the one that I had up here. Um, there's another spiral, um, but it is spread out more. And I'm not sure what we did to do that. Uh, there's kind of like what we just did. Um, so this one, uh, let's follow from right here, over and down and over and up. So that's a square, and I'm gonna count the points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and that's half of them, so it looks like 20 squares, okay? Um, that should not be, actually, I bet they're smaller squares. Maybe this is a square. And then we turn, and this is a square. Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's do this one. Let's do that one. So let's go back over to Python here, and uh, let's select our code here and do a Control C, and open up a new program, and do a Control V and paste it in. Okay. Now, so this stuff's all good. We'll set the screen to black. We'll set, we'll put the pen down. We'll set the color to whatever we want. And we will set the speed to the maximum so we don't have to wait so long. Uh, and then we're going to get rid of the body here. Okay. 
And we know that our program is made up of squares. So let's draw a square. So four sides. I'm going to try 150. We'll see how that works. And then um, T dot left, 90. That should draw a square, right? So when you get that typed in, go ahead and run it. Make sure you do get a square out of that. Did I write it correctly? So we get a square. Now, how many squares do we want? 20. So I need to take all of this code here, and I need to put it in a loop that gets done 20 times. OK? So. Let's go right above that. We're going to do another loop for, I can't use I twice here, so I'm going to use J in range 20. And what do I want to repeat 20 times? I want to repeat the code for drawing a square. So this code has to be indented so that it's under the control of my 20 loop there. Pardon me? Select all three of them and tab. Work. Oh, it's the insert key. Between overstrike and insert mode? The insert key. It's one of those six up at the top right. Find it? Oh, you get stuck in, in overstrike mode? <laughs> I know, I've been there. Um, what does this do? Did you run it? Actually, you know what you should always do? Before you run it, you should try and predict what it's going to do. See if you really understand what you wrote. What does it do? Pardon me? Same square 20 times, right? But it looks like one square when you get done because we're not turning in between. Okay? So. After I get done drawing my square, I want to turn. Okay? So this, we'll do this four times. And then the next thing we want to do is after we're done with the square, we'll be back at this level here. So if we're doing 20 of them, uh, we're going to turn 18 times, right? 360 divided by 20. So have the turtle turn 18, but that's only indented one level. And backspace should take you back. Doesn't matter if we go right or left. And now, it's very, very important that this be back at this level. If we leave it indented, then it's going to happen, uh, you know, every time we draw one side of the square, it's going to turn 90, and then it's going to turn another 18. And that's not what we want. If we push it all the way back to the left, it's only going to happen once after we get done drawing 20 squares. And since we're not turning after each square, we're only turning at the very end, it's just going to look like one square, even though we drew it 20 times, because we drew it all in the same spot. So it doesn't go back here. It doesn't stay in here. It goes out here. So if you think of this loop as just being 
instead of thinking of it as being a for loop with, with a couple of commands inside, just think of this as being a command that's is one command that draws a square. So you're going to draw a square. When you get done, you're going to turn. Colon. Expected indented block. Uh, which line is it saying that on? Um, for I in range. Uh, okay. I'm going to try something here. Whoops. And I'm going to go down here. Now let's try to run it. Expect it intended to block. Uh, line 18, T dot forward line. Um, that is an indented block. Um, for I, uh, for J in range, 20, for I in range, 4. Okay, do a shift tab. And again, get all the way back to the beginning. Okay, now do tab. And one more. Let's try it again. What the heck? I'm not seeing it. It looks it looks good to me. It's the same as the code I got on the board, isn't it? Um, I don't know, and I would have to sit and play with it for a while. I don't want to take that much time, but, uh, what you might try doing is take your whole program and copy and paste it into a new program and see if that works. Now try it. Yeah. Says what? Turtle object is misspelled forward. Yep, it's not forward, it is forward with an R. Oh. You know what? That is why a really good idea is to do T dot and F. How come it's not coming up with options? You're not getting options here when you when you type the dot? Um, yeah, usually it should, it should come up right away. Uh, I wonder if possibly because we've still got this going. It won't, close. it won't close. Okay, then this is what you do to close it. You close this console window and that'll kill it for sure. Okay, now let's try to run it again. Uh, distance is not defined. Okay, so just up here do distance equals, you know, 100 or 200 or whatever you want to do. Is it working? Oh, Madeline, you got yours working. Looks like you got yours working. Are you doing squares every time? Okay. Got it working? Okay. Front row. You guys good? Red on pink? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, if you, yeah, yeah. So if you do 200, yeah, you're right. And that will go all the way around. Yeah. So you got it figured out. Yours working. Okay. So everybody's good. Except yours working. Except for yours. Okay, you got turtle spelled wrong up there. The first one, yeah, you got your R and your U, or your, no, your L and your T. There you go. Now, if you do that at the end, it's only, it's only gonna get executed once. So, so if, you, if you put this statement right here at the end, it only gets done once. And you, if you want to be on multiple times, it's gotta be inside of a loop. 
So uh, I haven't tried mine yet. Uh, let's see if it works. I hope it does. Oh, I forgot to close my last one, so it's not going to work. Now let's try it again. Where'd it go? Okay. Okay. So it drew 20 squares for me. You know, it looks a lot worse up there than it does here. For some reason, the lines are really faint on the projector, but they look pretty good on my screen. Okay. So let's modify this a little bit. Okay. Um, let's allow the user to input what he wants, how many squares he wants. Okay. So let's do uh, squares. We'll call it uh, squares equals, and we're going to input, and we're going to ask the user for how many squares. And that's going to be an integer, so I need to take this whole thing and convert it to an int. So this number 20 right here is the number that tells me how many squares to draw. So we're going to replace that with squares. And this remains the same. Drawing a square is the same as it was before. We're not changing anything about drawing a square. Uh, but how much do you turn down here? Uh, turn that around. 360 divided by squares. And I think that's all we got to do, right? Uh, let's run that. And uh, down here, eventually, I'm going to tell it, I want, um, I'm going to do 90 squares. So it should... You know, the way I got it set up, if, since I'm dividing 360 by the number of squares, it should be perfectly symmetric and it should go all the way around. It's probably a good thing I only chose 90, huh? There we go. Do they still sell a toy called Spirograph? Yeah, you get the little circles and the gears and you stick a pen in a hole and you draw a different... That's kind of what this is like. Okay. Let's, um, let's close that. And instead of doing squares every time, let's let the user decide how many sides we want. So we won't say squares because it's not going to be a square. We'll say how many polygons. We'll just call it a polygon. And uh, squares probably doesn't isn't a very good name anymore either, so I'm going to change that to polygons. If you don't like polygons, you can just call it, you know, figures or something like that. Okay. So, and then down here I got divide by the number of polygons. So it looks like there's, uh, in the prompt I have to change it. Uh, the variable on the left has to be changed. And so basically every place where it's yellow here plus the one where it's uh, blue over here, those are the four changes that you need to make. And uh, so it's still going to draw squares though. And so what I need to do is I need to ask another question, uh, and that is how many sides do you want? So uh, sides equals integer input, how many sides? Sides. 
And then, so if they type in eight sides, then I got to do this eight times, right? So change the four to the number of sides. And then how much do you turn every time? How about 360 divided by sides? Whoops. And I think we got it now. So uh, we had to change these two lines right here to get two more variables from the user. And we had to change uh, polygons right here, sides right here, sides right here, polygons down here, okay? Go ahead and run that. Uh, try it with triangles or pentagons or hexagons or whatever, and try it with different numbers of polygons and see what you get. Is it doing what you expected it to do? Oops. Uh, we're going to have to talk one day about um, how to make things easy to see on the screen. Actually, it's easier to read than I thought it would be. Get it? So it's only doing. That should work. That should work. Oh, no color hot pink. Okay, let's see what you get. So I'll draw in hexagons and it's gonna turn about three degrees every time. So you should get a completed circle every time. <clears throat> Look how easy that is to do. It's really only five lines of code. It's just, it's just this part right here. The rest of it's just setting it up. So did you think two hours ago that you'd be able to draw stuff like that? Is it still not working for you? Pardon me? <sighs> okay, um, you forgot to import turtle up at the top. So put import turtle up at the top. Turtle. Okay, now try it. Let's try to run it and see what we get. Okay, there you go. How many polygons? Is yours working? See that last line there? That's not part of drawing a square, so that has to go back. Oh, one other thing. Um, I'm not sure exactly how Python does this, but I've noticed that if you indent using spaces on what, let's say on this line right here, if you indent this line using eight spaces and you indent this line using two tabs, it may come back and tell you that they're not indented at the same level. 
it's going to look like they are on the screen, but I would just recommend that you always use tabs. Okay, anytime you need to use tabs, if you need to unindent, you do a shift tab. And then you don't have to worry about Python figuring out if eight spaces is the same as two tabs. And I think there's an option in the editor that says like you can replace tabs with spaces if you want to, but if all you ever use is tabs, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, let's, um, so we made that about as flexible as we could make it. Um, I guess you could also ask them how fat you want the pen to be, but um, you know, you can do any number of polygons. Um, you can do any uh, different type of polygon, different number of sides. Okay, so uh, let's go back over here and uh, let's see, got some more spirals. This one I did not do. I'm not sure. Um, oh, it's just drawing triangles. Just not quite triangles. So it's turning a little more than 60 degrees every time, like maybe 61 degrees. Uh, that one, we haven't talked about how you fill stuff in, but it's actually pretty easy to do. Uh, this is the one that we just did, right? Uh, we are drawing... What are we drawing for polygon here? It looks like this might be a two, three, four, uh, an octagon. And we're just rotating and drawing some more of them. Uh, this one is, um, yeah, this one was a little more work. Let me, do you, you see what's going on there? Um, just focus on one point of the star. So just focus on this part right here, okay? So I'm drawing a diamond, and then I'm increasing the side length, drawing another one, increasing the side length, drawing another one, and maybe 10 of those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So you do 10 of those. And then you, and the angles on these, you know, this is gonna be 45 degrees, and this one is going to be 135 degrees. And so go forward, turn, turn 45 degrees, go forward. Um, I'll turn right 45 degrees. Okay, and then you turn around. Uh, what is that angle there? That is going to be 180 minus 45. It's going to be 135. And then you turn another 45 degrees to get back. So once you figure out the angles for drawing a diamond, that's 45 degrees in the middle, uh, then the rest of it's pretty easy. So you draw, this is a loop that gets done 10 times. It says draw polygon or draw diamond. So you got your diamond code. And then after that, it says add like 10 pixels to the side, then go back and do it again, add 10 pixels to the side, do it 10 times. And then what do you do with that? You put that in a loop that gets done eight times. And how much do you have to turn after you do each one? One eighth of a circle, 45 degrees, okay? You could do that. It's a little harder than what we've done, but you could go home and you could do that. Matter of fact, you might want to try. Uh, this one, uh, let's skip that one. That's kind of ugly. Uh, this is, there's also a way that you can make it draw a turtle on the screen. And, you know, this just kind of looks like a, a, a sunflower. This one's interesting. I may show you how to do this one, uh, but I will not give you any assignments where you have to draw something like that. That one is quite different from all of the other ones. Uh, so this one, I'm not sure uh, about the arrows getting on there. I don't remember how to do that, but um, it's just drawing a square and then a pentagon and then a hexagon and then uh, whatever, septagon, is that what you call it? And it changes the color every time. And it does have that fill thing that we, that we haven't talked about yet. 
Uh, this one is just drawing a bunch of diamonds, I think, and filling part of them in. Oh, this is my favorite one. We don't know how to do that yet, though. We know how to draw a spiral. We just don't know how to change the different parts of it. So you've got these spirals with different colored components. But that's not very hard to do either. Okay, um, let's go look at our homework for tomorrow. So here is our first assignment. Click on stars. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, I'll fix the link. I'll tell you what, what you have to do. Um, we're going to draw stars. And I don't remember how much stuff you have to input. But one of the numbers is the points on the star. And if they say four, then you're going to draw something that looks like this. If they say, um, I'm not going to do five because I don't do 75 or 72 degree angles very well. If they say six, you're going to do something like this, uh, 60 degrees. Those aren't very good 60 degree angles either, but it'll be nice and symmetric like a snowflake. So you just go forward and back, you turn, you go forward and back, you turn, you go forward and back. And so you got to, they're going to input probably the length. And I think I probably let them input the color and the pen size and a few things like that too. Um, and then they tell, the important thing here is how many points does a star have? And so you go forward and back, turn, forward and back, turn, forward and back, turn. And you just need to put the forward and back and the turn into a loop. And how much do you turn? You know the answer to that one. How much do you turn? Divided by the number of points in this, yeah. Okay. And the other one is spiral. And I've, I've still, I've got the wrong picture up there for spiral. I've got that multicolored one up there, but you don't have to be multicolored because you don't know how to do that yet. But you will before long. So on that one, you just have to draw a spiral. Okay. And I will, oh, and let's, let's do, what was the, uh, the car rental one? I will fix the instructions. I'll save them in the right place this time. And, uh, and then you can have another shot at that one. So I'll just reopen the drop box for that one. And if you already put something in, you can always put something else in on top of it. And I just take the last one. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to work a while, I will stay here. And if you have any questions. No different colors. It will be one color. Okay. You know what? If you want to work together on all of them, you can. No more than three. Um, when you go to run it, I think it automatically saves. But it saves it with, you know, if you don't give it a name, it saves it with untitled one, untitled two, and stuff like that. So, yeah, you should give it a good descriptive name so when you're going to look for it later on, you can find it.